Welcome back, Alex. Do you want to talk about your time in Colorado? Let's start with something positive. What did you learn from your visit to Haven Springs? Well, everybody, welcome back to Life is Strange True Colors. The meaning of home, nothing, not to be afraid of my emotions. Yeah, that one. I learned to let myself feel, I guess, and to not be afraid of those feelings. Couldn't one argue that those old fears turned out to be justified? What do you make of that friction? I suppose I'm proud of you for trying. You helped some people. Chased a mystery. Got to kiss a pretty girl. But Alex, you're right back where you started. You're wrong. I don't belong in here. If that were true, Alex, you'd know you were talking to an empty chair. What the fuck? Right, let's have a look at this, my block. Attention residents, please join me in welcome Alex Chen back to the Helping Hands. We're happy, they are not surprised. Get back here? Oh yeah, so one missing patient answers to Alex. She was always scratching at the door trying to get out, but she's declawed, so her capacity to defend for herself is minimal. If spotted, please exercise caution when approaching. She will appear friendly and normal, but we've had some behavioural issues in the past. Please help me find my patient. I'm starting to get really worried. You got like none of these then. No more memories. Creepy as heck. Posters. Let's have a look at all these. Is that what I look like? Really? There's a guitar down here. Guitar case. Hey. Knock, my knock. Guitar. Knock, knock. Who's there? Knock. Who's there? Um, Alex Chen. My guitar case has never heard of me. Sure. Oh, there's a card. Yeah, we need to find the card for it. I think it's either a birth or it's... Okay, the door. You can open it, but... No, you can't. Can it's locked? Is it locked? No, she's locked. Of course. Family photos. Don't belong to Dr. Lin. A tuning peg. Take. Need that to tune a guitar. Once we've opened it, can't open it yet though. Let me look at these pictures on here. No. Folder. Let's have a look at the folder. I guess that's me. Case number five three three two two. 
which means that is the number we have to put in on the case. We'll open it though. Let's read it. Alexandra, Alex Chen, age 21, gender female, symptoms, emotional instability, occasional violent outbursts, hallucinations, visual hallucinations, oral, delusional ideation, ideation, depression, anxiety, diagnosis. Thrown down a... what? Now, so Alex experiences a detailed and robust delusion that she's able to read other people's emotional states and believes that because of this ability, she's uniquely equipped to help others overcome their own emotional trauma. It's difficult to overlook the irony, someone as profoundly dysfunctional as Alex adopting the role of emotional caretaker. Had she not been returned to my care, I do not think it hyperbolic to speculate that her reckless attempts at fixing her friends and family will eventually have gotten someone hurt. It's my belief that Alex's delusions constitute a threat to her continued well-being, as well as those of others. As such, I recommend Alex be thrown down an endless pit, her body shattered against each jutting board and errant brick, until she is forgotten in the darkness beneath the world. This is my professional opinion the most humane thing we can do for her brutal we can play this Okay, let's put this in. What? Oh crap, it's five. Is it five two two three three? I yeah, five three three two two. Okay. Case number five three three two two. Yeah, five three three two two. Five. And then we can use the tuning pick. Slot that into where it needs to go. And oh, we have got it. Fix. Do, 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 do. She's coming round. <laughs> How the hell did she survive that fall? Uh. Don't touch it, don't touch it. <sighs> oh my god. And we've still got all that way to go. She'd have been quicker, she could have grabbed that ladder, she'd be up. But, she also wouldn't learn the full truth or have the full evidence that she needs to do what she has to do. 
Then we also won't get this emotional scene. Psst. Alex. Oh, Gabe. Gabe. <gasps> You're dead. So? Lots of people are dead, Alex. Most people. Where are we? I want to say... a hospital? Dr. Mendez to intensive care. Dr. Mendez to intensive care. Yep, definitely a hospital. <laughs> Gabe. Okay, here's what I do know. You are 10, I am 14. Our mother is sick, so is our father. But it's a different kind of sickness. Play your part. Ow! Gabe, why? I didn't do anything. Stop. Both of you. Dad. Behave. Alex, go check on your mother. Okay. She was right over there, waiting for me. Let's look around. There it is. The painting that taught me that art sucked sometimes. We couldn't afford a private room. Just got lucky, I guess. Gabe and I used to watch cartoons on this thing after school. Gabe, Alex, I need you to listen very carefully. We got some scary news today, and I'm going to be spending some time at the hospital. What? Mom, are you okay? Hush now. It's going to be okay. Do you understand me? The we spent so much time in here that I basically memorized every article. Gabe told me it was full of needles. It scared me to death. Playing her up. Right, oh, my block again. Here we go. In light of the recent excitement, now is a good time to remind Helping Hand residents that impulses to leave our institution, while understandable, are best resisted. Remember, the outside world is sharp-toothed and possessed of an insatiable hunger, and you are soft and slow and appetising. Why throw yourself into its mouth? Throw yourself instead into mine. Wonderful. We've got journal. Alex Chen, age 10. Sadness. Today we went back to the hospital because my mum is sick. Our neighbour drove us there because my dad stayed the night with my mum. I wanted to bring my rat shoe shoe because I always bring shoe shoe when I go to the hospital to see my mum but I forgot. Mum says I have to take care of my brother and my dad. She used to not be so skinny but now she's so skinny. I wish she was not so skinny and I wish she could come home. She gave me a necklace she wears sometimes. It's so sad. It was always too hot in this room. She's just on the other side. How many nights did Dad spend in this room? Sleeping in an uncomfortable chair and eating vending machine dinners? There's something so weird and scary about watching your dad cry. 
Mom. Every time I saw her, I worried it would be the last. Hi, Mom. So brave. Is that how it went? You don't think you missed anything? Water. Ow! Gabe, why? I didn't do anything. Stop. Both of you. Dad. Behave. As he keeps saying, play your part, Alex. Remember. Alex, go check on your mother. Okay. Wait. Did I miss something? Water. Wasn't there before. No matter how much Mom drank. Her throat was always dry. She needs a drink. Can we grab it now? No, we still can't grab a drink, which is strange. We should be able to. Touch up a notebook, tissues, speak. Hi, Mom. <coughs> Mom. She needs Mom. a drink. Water, Alex. Get her some water. You almost never cried, even when you were very small. Did you know that? That's been my biggest challenge with you. How do you take care of someone who is already so strong? stronger I want you to make me a promise your brother your father they are going to need you you have to be strong Will you do that, Alex? <laughs> Such a brave girl. How do you ever get so brave? Thank <laughs> you. 
Back in their old home. Oh, that rat. Shoo shoo. Was that the last time you talked to her? Mom. I. I think so. Do you miss her? Gabe, what's going on? You're 11, I'm almost 15. Dad and I are time bombs. You keep running back and forth, trying to defuse us both. This is going to suck so bad. Play your part. Jeez. Once again. While well, they're arguing. No, that's not how it went down, right? How did it really go down then? It 
was my job to keep the peace. But no matter what I did, that's laundry. I always set it here when it was done so he could find it. I tried so hard to keep my promise to her. Sad. Shoo shoo. At least I managed to hold on to you, Shoo Shoo. Gabe had barely used this backpack in weeks. Nobody could get him to go to school. Mom and Dad had this TV before they had either of us. The killer mistress tabs in this book weren't even close to right. Gabe loved Son of Lead back when it was an indie. It was too gory for me. When wasn't this place falling apart? Mom's old sewing kit. Don't think I've ever even tasted a butter cookie. I can't believe they were ever this happy. I wanted to be a werewolf that Halloween. Couldn't afford the costume. Cleaning Dad's ashtray was not my favorite job in the world. It was full of greeting cards. Mom kept every single one we ever got. Thanks for trying, lucky cat. My job was to sort them in order of how close we were to a collections notice. Gabe used to steal Dad's beer all the time. It was like the one thing they didn't fight about. We never really touched these after Mom died. She was such a good cook. Two cups water for one cup rice. Set timer for 30 minutes. Do your history homework. Serve. Almost empty. Almost always. Hey Gabe, I'm Leslie Halloran. I'm from the Oregon State Child Protective Services. We got a call from someone who said there might have been some kind of fight here last night. Is your dad home? Oh gosh, you know what? We were, yeah, that, that was like uh, rehearsal. And I'm in this play at school, and my dad, like he was um, helping me learn my lines. Must be some play. But if you need anything, my number is on there. Okay? Okay, so we got a new entry in this Alex Chen AG11 fear. Remember to keep everyone happy. We got something scribbled out here homework, English, history, math, health, vacuum, dust services, organized bills, call pharmacy, dad's blood pressure meds, break time, listen to records, five minutes no more, Gabe's laundry, start, make rice, chop veggies, cook chicken, throw veggie into pan with chicken, serve, Gabe's laundry, wash out, dry out, dad's laundry, start. God, that's sad. She ended up taking her mum's roll, didn't she, in the end? Where are you going? Are you gonna tell her? Or is that my job? Keep your voice down. Fine, I'll do it. Alex, dad lost his job again. So we're broke again. Don't talk to me that way. <laughs> Despite what you may believe, you do not know everything. You think what? I laid myself off? It's okay, we'll figure it out. I could, um. I don't know, dad. But what are we supposed to do now? We gotta eat. We can sell some records, or or what about my guitar? We can sell that? Alex, what is it gonna take to get you to stop defending him? If your mother could see you now. I don't wanna hear about mom. Babe! <laughs> I'm so tired of you using her as an excuse to be a piece of shit. <laughs> don't fucking touch me, piece of shit. Dad. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Damn it, Alex. I'm okay. It's okay. It was an accident. Alex, I, I, I didn't... Dad. Dad, it's okay. Really. I'm not hurt. <laughs> I can't do this. Dad? Oh. 
someone will come. That woman from CPS. Someone. Dad. I'm sorry. Abandoning his kids. Next bit. Hey, can I ask you a question? Which orphanage is this? The one in Grant Park? Kind of thought it'd be nicer. I can't do this, okay? I... I can't. <laughs> you need to. No. You need to be honest about what you see. I was. I have, and now I'm done. Almost, but not yet. You are 12, I am 16. I steal a car and end up in juvie. Gabe, come on. Then you're 13, 14, 15. Orphanages, group homes, musty rooms in the strange houses of foster parents. By the time you're 17, you've seen them all. Somewhere along the line, you start to feel things. Your own emotions don't belong to you. You have nothing, no one. You are alone. I don't want this. Alex. Play your part. Play my part. What letters to dad? I used to write one every day. Stupid. Why? You clearly missed him. And I thought he missed me. Hence, stupid. God. They put me on so many meds. Did any of them ever work? Some of them helped, a little. None of them fixed me. In their defense, mutant empathy isn't exactly in the DSM. Mutant. Pretty sure it's locked. Must be after curfew. We're not going anywhere. We weren't allowed to bring glass into the dorms. So we had to drink from this thing. Like hamsters in a cage. Except if you give a hamster a glass, they don't toss it at the other hamster's heads. Guess I missed a few days. How are you holding up, Shu? Can't believe how long you've had that thing. That thing was my only friend after you left. They used to say this place wasn't a prison. 
Well, maybe they were trying to keep you safe? Guess so. Whatever the reason, the end result was prison bars. I took a fork in here one time and hid it under my mattress. Just cuz, fuck you. Residents must adhere to their assigned schedules at all times and are not permitted to loiter in the dormitory outside of designated free time. Glass and silverware are to remain in the canteen. Do not bring these into the dormitory. Non-resident guests are not permitted in the dormitory. Lights out occurs at 9pm every evening. No music, no TV, no screen time after the lights out. Fight to adhere to any of these rules will result in disciplinary action. Like it's a bloody prison. That is disgusting. They should have stenciled the same thing on all of us. Do you really feel like you were their property? We didn't belong to anyone else, did we? I remember the kid who put this here. Sadie... Sally. Um, something with an S? You were friends at first, right? Way at first. Then I freaked out on her and she was done with me. Just like everyone else. Fancy. Everyone had one good outfit. We wore them to meet the parents. Did it help? Kind of think you already know the answer to that question. Well, there are my strings. Where's my guitar? I don't understand. Why can't I have my guitar? We've been over this, Alex. Your guitar stays in the rec room. You can play it during free time. That's bullshit! I don't need it in the fucking rec room! I need it when I'm stuck in the fucking dorms! Alex, that's enough. Maybe we'll just take away your guitar privileges entirely, if that's what you prefer. You can't do that! Sad. Should've just given them their own rooms. Um, right, yeah, we've only got these two at the moment. Right, let's get down here. Foot locker. She's been through so much. I just don't know if we're prepared for a troubled girl. It says here she's sensitive. What is that? She's never found a home before. I'm sure she's a sweet girl, but she's not for us. She's awfully old, isn't she? This is the kid that's been in all those fights, right? <laughs> I want to help. I, I really do, but there's just something... Oh. Never oh, wanted by anyone to sad. With her. Sorry. Why? You need to see it. See what? That nobody picked me? Nobody picked you. No 
Nobody picked you. Nobody wanted you. Mom died. Dad left. I bailed. You couldn't keep us together. It was my job to keep us. You were 11 years old. You were 11 years old. You were a kid, Alex. Let it go. It's not your job. Life gets hard. Sometimes it's a big shit sandwich. Make it better. Be angry at dad. Miss mom. Hell, be angry at me. But don't give up. No one gets to tell you what you're worth. And no one can take your life away. Fight. I'm not sure I... You have a gift. It's something you don't even understand. You can change the world. Make it better. Now get up. What? Get up and fight. He's trying to help her. He's trying to get her to get up because she would die if she just laid there. And she needs to discover the truth. God, this is mad. Oh dear, dear. I'm not sure if I can access the phone at this point. I wonder if I can. <gasps> Jeez, that's broken a rib or two. Probably an arm, maybe. I'm going to finish this video in a minute. A lantern. I definitely would not like to be in a mine. Alright, what we got? Phones off. Everything's buggered. Pike. Yeah, we got nothing. I've got to find a way out of here. Right, I'm gonna finish this one here, guys. In the next one, we will try and find our way out of this mine and discover the truth of what Jed and Typhon are hiding. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and until next time, take care. <laughs>